All right, this is a rebellion in three acts. The first act um, is a story. I wanna share a story with you. And this is a story that's uh, really uh, dear to my heart. It's, uh, it's a story of really my first peak experience or spiritual experience um, that really informed me moving forward. And the story takes place at NC State University. I was a sophomore there in computer engineering. And uh, from, from the time that I, as far back as I can remember, I was in love with computers and technology, so it seemed like a good career path. And at the time, I was starting to really get interested in consciousness, in human potential. And so one day, as I was exploring all these different belief systems that made me up and seeing how they got in my way, I did a thought experiment. And actually, looking back, I think it was really a kind of heart experiment that I ran that day. And in this experiment, I started to imagine what it would be like to be a soldier in World War I. And I, I tried my best to put myself in their shoes, in their boots, I guess. And I started kind of imagining what it would be like to be scared and to be uncertain of when I might die or when people around me might die, to be cold and, and alone in a way. And I felt into the, the terror and the, the anguish of that. And as I felt into it more and more, I actually started feeling it. I started becoming the soldier. It went beyond empathy. And at a certain point, this experiment took a, on a life of its own. And not only was I the soldier, but I was also all the other soldiers on both sides that were fighting in this war. And at that point, I didn't have any control over this uh, ex exercise anymore. It was, it was doing me. And then I, it went even further, and I, not only was I the soldiers who were fighting and killing each other, but I was also you know, the mother who's sending her son off to war, and the kids who are watching their father go off to fight for them. And all of the people that were impacted by this amazing uh, bloody exchange. And at a certain point, I, it dropped even further down, that the bottom fell out, and I felt like I was identified with and experiencing all of the suffering of human experience, everything, all the way to the bottom. And at this point, it felt like I couldn't hold it anymore. There was no way that I personally, Vince, could, could hold this. It was too big. And right before it felt like that experience was going to annihilate me, kill me, I suddenly experienced this welling up, this arising of compassion, this deep quivering of the heart in response to the suffering of the world. And this compassion was as universal as the suffering that I was experiencing. It was profound, it, it was embracing, it was holding, it was responding to the suffering. And in this experience, I suddenly knew everything was okay. Not because the suffering had gone away, or not because we haven't committed tremendous acts of violence against each other as human beings, but because there was something that could hold it, this deeper wisdom of the heart. And so this experience really blew me away. For the next two weeks, I was walking around campus and I was actually had no clue who the hell I was anymore. I didn't know who and what I was and what I was supposed to be doing. And so this really led me to the first act of rebellion, which was to drop out of school. Um, you know, a lot of people drop out of school to start a billion dollar company. I dropped out to meditate. And uh, I, I, for the next five years, I, I really went deep, especially into the Buddhist contemplative tradition, because I found there's some helpful stuff there. And at the end of this period, after I'd really exhausted this act of rebellion and come to, in some way, find what I was looking for, uh, I began the next act, which was to start this project that you see behind you, Buddhist Geeks. I started this with a dear friend, and we began the second act of rebellion by challenging our elders. So my teachers and mentors had mostly been, you know, boomer hippies that went to Asia, meditated and came back. And for them, technology and the world of technology is in some ways was antithetical to the contemplative life, right? These technologies just distract and fragment you. That's all they're good for. And I felt like there had to be more to it. There had to be some potential in this technologies and in, in many aspects of modernity to support the aims of the contemplative life. And so this was really our second, my second act of rebellion to begin to explore the way that Buddhism was converging, coming together with technology, culture, psychology, science, 
And that led to eight years of exploration and conversation and gatherings to explore these things. And out of that, out of the last eight years, came the third act of rebellion, which I have to say I'm still in it. I'm right in the heart of it now. And this third act really gave rise to two things. One is an exploration and an acknowledgement that we are currently seeing the emergence of what I would call contemplative technologies. And that changes the Buddha up here to this kind of Buddha, one that has you know, multi-channel EEG set on. And these technologies are really exciting. They have, I think, the potential to catalyze, to accelerate, to enhance our ability to develop these contemplative states of mind and values, things like concentration, compassion, wisdom. And the second act of rebellion was that my partner Emily and I, as we uh, became meditation teachers ourselves, uh, started to develop a, f a methodology for practicing that in some ways um, went beyond Buddhism. We actually left the tradition in a certain way, although we haven't really left it. And in some ways, this third act of rebellion, both with contemplative technology and mind hacking, has been about breaking out of the frame of the Buddhist tradition. So actually starting in the frame and then exploding outside of it. And with mind hacking, we wanted to see how could we take the best of the techniques and traditions that we'd learned, in particular five meditative skill sets that we'd developed, and wrap it with a larger framework or a mindset or an ethos, the hacker ethos, you know, which is, hey, this experience could be looked at as an operating system, right? And not only that, but we could actually learn to understand that system. We could reverse engineer the system, and we can hack it, we can change it. And there's many ways we can change it. These are just five. Um, but basically, that there is a way to transform our experience from the inside out. Or as one of my teachers said, we can perform neurosurgery on ourself. So going back to the, to the first act, the first story I shared, you know, everything that's arisen out of this exploration that my adult life has been with Buddhist geeks and contemplative technology and mind hacking, at the core of it has been this real deep question of how can I and how can we respond to suffering in this world, in this time, 2014? How can we utilize everything we have available to us to do that, to respond with compassion to the suffering of the world? So thank you so much for your time and your attention. Thank you.